right, everybody, welcome to another session of Gentle Chair Yoga with Keith Beasley. Um, this is Bhatti Blumenthal, Branch Supervisor of the Putterham location of the Public Library of Brookline. Um, as always, we wanted to quickly thank our friends of the Brookline Public Library for sponsoring this program and programs like it. Uh, we also wanted to recognize our community partners, Brookline Interactive Group for streaming, uh, joining us today and streaming this program on uh, Xfinity and RCN local channel three, as well as their through their Facebook and YouTube channel. Um, as always, uh, before joining any exercise program, we have a disclaimer. Um, participation in this online yoga program could result in injury. Not all exercises presented here are suitable for everyone. These exercises are not intended to substitute for proper medical care or advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. The creators, teachers, and producers assume no responsibility for injuries from participation in this program. And with that, I give it to Keith. Hello, good morning. So let's begin with some breathing, some well, good posture and breathing. So probably the two most important things that we do in our yoga practice are good breathing, so diaphragmatic breathing, so that we feel the, we feel the belly going in and out with the breath. We feel the belly moving with the breath. And the other part of our yoga practice is good posture, whether you're sitting in a chair or standing. It can be interesting if you notice, if you ever see people standing around, sometimes their posture is not so good. Same thing with seated. But that good posture really pays off. It trains our body to have good alignment. And when we have good alignment, everything works a lot better. So feel free if you want, you can rest one hand on the belly. You can even put the other hand up around the top of the uh, where the heart is or just above the heart. And as you breathe in, you'll notice that the belly expands and then the ribs open. And then there's a little bit of movement up in the upper chest, but most of the movement is down below. And then uh, more, some of the movement, medium movement is in the middle where the ribs are, and then less movement or the least movement is up around the collarbones and the uh, upper ribs. So it's best to begin with the belly. And once you can feel the belly moving, try feeling the ribs. And once you're feeling the ribs moving, try feeling the sternum or the collarbones. And then notice the feet. Notice the feet, whether you're standing or seated and Feel the weight even on the left and right foot and also even all around the sole of the foot. So I'll hold my foot up like this so that it, there's evenness here on the ball of the foot across left to right, evenness on the heel, and then evenness from the heel to the ball of the foot. So we feel like we're getting really nice support and you might feel like the arch, we, we like nice arches. We like the arch to be a little lifted rather than collapse. That's a nice thing for our foot. And then try lifting and spreading the toes. So to start with, just, just think about wiggling the toes, wiggling them up and down like this. And then you can wiggle them and then think about as if you were spreading your fingers. And let's try this. You can hold your hands up like this. Hold your hands out and then spread the fingers apart. Do that a couple of times. Making sure we're not causing any pain or discomfort when we do this. So that's very important that we practice our yoga practice. Perhaps the most important thing that we do in yoga is called ahimsa or nonviolence. So as you lift the toes up, spread the fingers out, and think about spreading the toes as if they were like the fingers. So there's this sort of widening. I'm going to hold my hands up so you can see. But I'm widening my fingers apart and then widening the toes apart. And in the beginning, the toes might not spread very much. 
but we start to train the muscles down there to actually come alive. We want the muscles. We it, Most people can wiggle their toes to some degree, but we have to train the feet to actually spread the toes apart. And we can start with that with just getting any movement at all down there. You start with any movement. And then if you practice that on a regular basis, you'll start to feel the movement will start to expand a little bit. It's slow, so you have to be very patient. But you'll find that over time, you can get a little bit more movement. And then go ahead and rest the hands and rest the toes. And sitting up nice and tall, now feel the bottoms of the feet and at the same time feel the buttocks. So you can even pat your buttocks if you want poke your buttocks. So in order to be able to feel the buttocks, we have to have some way to um, make that connection with the, uh, with the brain. So sometimes just by even tapping on it, and then you feel, what is it, what, what is it feeling like down there when I tap on it? And then when you take the tapping away, see if you can come back to that feeling. It won't be tapping, but see if you can feel that area that you were tapping. And we do this back and forth as a way to uh, enliven or to uh, make the muscles become aware. And that's really important. If, if we're not aware of our muscles, they don't function. And if you're not aware of them long enough, they stop functioning. And, uh, and then they start to get weaker and they start to get tighter. And uh, it takes time for that to happen. But it's always good to enliven everything we can. Let's bring our palms together and let's inhale. And we'll circle around. So reaching up and relaxing down. As you reach up, think about extending the spine. And we can help with that by gently pressing the feet. So remember before we were feeling the bottoms of the feet, now feel them pressing into the floor. And then the same thing with the buttocks. Feel the buttocks pressing down as the spine extends up. And these spinal extensions are really micro movements. They are very small. It's really about engaging the muscles and getting a little bit of movement. You know, maybe just uh, an eighth of an inch, a couple of millimeters. Very small. But that helps to keep us, uh, keeps our spine feeling better, that lengthening in the spine. And then we're going to bring the palms together in front of the heart. And we're going to release the hands down as we exhale and turn the palms up and then inhale up, exhale down. You might notice my chin is rising and falling slightly. And you might even, it's hard to tell here, but my pelvis is tilting slightly back and forth. Just a little bit. And I have a little bit of contraction in the belly here. So maybe 20 to 30%. So there's a firmness without it being strained or super tight. A firmness. And that's going to help to support the back and the spine. Our spine was meant to be supported by the abdomen and back muscles and the side muscles too. And then one more time, so inhaling up and then exhaling down. Let's roll the shoulders a few times just to loosen up. We're going to go back like this, like we're swimming. Actually, let's add a little swimming here like this. And then a little forward. Remember, as we come forward with the arms, we cross over to the opposite side and come down the leg. So there's a little bit of turning. So you notice that my shoulders coming forward. So my shoulders are turned a little to the side. And I'm going back and forth like that. Like I'm swimming. This really is very similar to when you swim, a crawl stroke, just without the water. My, my tub is so small, I don't think we could, <laughs> couldn't even fit in and 
even anything close to swimming and sitting up nice and tall, let's take a few breaths. So inhale and exhale. So this good breathing is a way that we start to warm the body up. As we've talked about before, when we speed the breath up slightly, it warms us. It, it, it uh, raises the energy level up. And when we slow the breath down and make the breath longer and calmer and quieter, it calms us down and it's the way that we relax. So we call that the relaxation response. And we'll rest the hands here. I'd like to start with some yoga for the voice. So we'll start with the sound of OM. And OM is really three sounds. It's AH. So think about the shape of the mouth. Big wide mouth. Uh, and the second one is the O. Oh. So the O is just like the O shape in the mouth. You could even, if, uh, if you wanted to, you could even sometimes if you press on your cheeks slightly, oh, you get a little different, you get a little more O oh sound. And the last one, we close the mouth and feel the vibration in the throat and let the vibration move down into the upper lungs. So that last part is similar to when we do the bumblebee breath, when we do brummery. <clears throat> which maybe if we have time, we'll do that later. But let's start with home. So please join me. And it's a normal breath in. Um, we'll do it three times. So two more. Good for loosening up phlegm, those vibrations, and uh, sometimes a little water. A sip of water can be nice in case you get a little tickle in the throat. So in the beginning, uh, making sounds, you're really using the vocal cords a lot, especially, um, especially these days. We probably don't talk as much, or at least some of us are not talking as much, and because uh, we interact less with people. So we need that, you know, that's such a human quality, the, the communication by voice. It, um, I've read some things that is, that's really what distinguishes us. That's the thing that really makes us um, unique in all, the, uh, in all the animals is our ability, our, vo our vocalizations, our ability to communicate with speech. And let's add a few breaths. Inhale. And exhale and give yourself a little hug. Uh, I'm going to go back and forth. So I won't tell you when to breathe. So breathe whatever feels comfortable. So the arms, they sweep out and then they cross. So whether or not you're holding the elbows or holding the upper arms or holding the shoulders or shoulder blades behind, it doesn't matter. It's really getting this nice movement back and forth. Nice movement. So when we do this, there's an alternating opening of the chest when the arms come apart and a closing of between on the shoulder blades. And then the opposite when they come forward. The chest closes and the shoulder blades open behind us. And that's a nice thing that helps to get movement in the thoracic spine, that area of the spine that runs just below the neck, about midway down the back. It's, it's really the part that's right around the shoulder blades. And we'll bring the hands down and sit up nice and tall. And let's uh, start with a little bit of a uh, joint work. We're going to start by rocking the feet. So the toes are pointing straight ahead here. 
So try to make sure that your feet are lined up with the knees, which are lined up with the hips. They could be a little wider if you wanted. Try not to turn them out. Try to keep them straight if you can, or more or less straight. If they turn out a little, it's okay. So we're working on our alignment here. And then try to slow it down a little. So when you rock the feet, feel the bottoms of the feet. It's as if somebody was taking their hand and rubbing it along the bottom of the foot, but you, what you're feeling is the floor or perhaps your, the inside of your shoes, the weight shifting. It is easier to feel um, with your feet on the floor. However, don't sacrifice that feeling. You know, if you need your shoes for support, please wear your shoes. So balance is more important, you know, having good support with your shoes. And of course, if it's really cold where you are, I don't know how everybody's air conditioning is, but if it was particularly cold, you might want shoes on. And then let's add the hands to it. Let's just sweep the hands back and forth. Think about making an arc. So when the hands sweep down and they sweep up, they sweep up and they sweep down and up. And the movement is ending. The, when the fingers come up, either the toes or the heels are up. And then they sweep down. So it's as if when the hands are down at the bottom of the arc, the feet are flat. And then they come up on the other side. So we're really working on timing as much as movement. So we get timing and movement. Remember to breathe. Timing and movement. And then if you want, you can add a little circle around. That's a little more challenging. So in the beginning, once this gets easy with the rocking the back and forth, try the circle. And if it doesn't work out exactly, it's not, nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. And that's maybe a good thing about our, our uh, virtual yoga classes is that you don't have to be self-conscious um, about doing it perfectly. Nobody does it perfectly. I've I, actually, I don't know of anybody who's ever done it perfectly. Actually, I, I, I can think of like one or two people. Like BKS Iyengar was a very famous yogi for his poses. Uh, and there's a handful of people like that. Not many. Um, and sitting up nice and tall and patting one knee and lifting it up. So for this one, you may want to use the back of the chair. But if you want more of a challenge, try sitting up without the back of the chair. So it'd be like as if I was turned sideways like this without slumping. So I still want my back to be flat or maybe a little bit slightly arched. And I need firmness in the belly to do that. So I do need some good action in the abdomen to not use the back of the chair. So don't sacrifice your posture for not using the back of the chair. If you have to use the back of the chair, try the other foot now. You just pat that knee, lift it up, and then swing. So if you want more of a challenge, you're not using the back of the chair, and if you want like a regular challenge, please use the back of the chair. And see if you can keep the rest of the body straight when you do this. So we've been working on that for <clears throat> the last few classes, that idea of uh, stabilizing the core of the body, really holding it firmly in place without straining, though. Very important. Please don't strain. Make the movements uh, smaller. Let's try it now with the uh, same idea of keeping everything stable by lifting one foot up and then the other. You could start if that's if that's uh, <clears throat> if if you're having trouble maintaining the stability. Just try lifting the heel up as if you were going to lift the foot up. So if I'm sideways like this and I start to lift my foot up. I'm going to lift my heel first so that there's not much weight now on my toes. 
And the nice thing about that is I don't hardly have any weight on here, but I'm more stable. Just the fact that the foot is touching, just like when we use our fingers for balance on a chair. No, it's not that we're leaning on the chair. It's just that feeling gives us better balance. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it works. And then, so we're going to go back and forth like that. So if you need to just lift the heel up as if you're going to lift the foot. And if that feels okay, try lifting the foot up. And if you want to make it more challenging, lift it a little higher. And if you still want to make it more challenging, try lifting one hand up when you do it. But keeping the rest of the body stable. So there's a slight movement in the shoulders, but I'm still vertical. I'm not moving around. And let's uh, switch to the other side. So you get a lot of choices here. Just lifting the heel, lifting the foot a little, lifting the foot a lot, lifting the foot and raising the hand up. And also the speed that you go, harder to go slower. And the rest of me is relatively uh, steady. That's what I'm looking for, stability. And you're gonna feel it here. And let's rest, rest the feet, please. You'll feel it in the belly, perhaps in the sides. We don't want to feel it in the back, really. Maybe some uh, firmness or effort, but not strain and certainly not pain. And also no pain in the belly. If you're feeling like the muscles here are really having to work super hard, then uh, it, you're challenging yourself perhaps too much. And let's sit up nice and tall. Take a couple of breaths in there. Just a couple. And one more. So that was three. And let's lift the chin up and then let it come down. So I'm going to go back and forth with the chin. Careful not to drop the head backwards too much. Just a little bit backwards. I'll turn sideways so you can see. I want to be mindful not to collapse the neck like this. I want to keep the neck open so that the, there's space between the vertebra and the back of the neck. And when I, bring the, when I allow the chin to come down, keep the throat soft. Think maybe even about as you bring the chin down, think about lifting the chin up. It's probably going to harm someone else. So if you stick with not harming, it uh, covers everything. And let's sit up nice and tall. And so we did the, um, oh, we haven't done the, no, we didn't do the arms. So let's do the arms. Let's add the uh, fingers like this. Add the fingers opening and closing. Let's hold the hands like this, like a little light flashing, like a beacon or a, uh, I just saw something with the, uh, uh, the lighthouses. Think about, I mean, it's not such a big deal anymore. Everybody has these fancy navigation systems, but it used to be that, that people really relied on lighthouses to know where they were when they got close to land. So think of your, yourself as a lighthouse and your hands are this beacon of light. So as, um, as the lights come on, my hands are going out and then I close the hands gently as I come back. And you can go out as far as you want or as, and come back as much as you want. So you could make this a bigger movement, reaching way out and then coming way back. And then the shoulders are starting to open like this. Or you could make it a smaller movement. But either way, the shoulders are moving a little, either a little bit or a lot like this. And again, that's good for our thoracic spine. And let's lower the hands down and flip them over and touch the shoulders. For the elbows. And then I'm going to start to lift the elbows up, but keep touching the shoulders. Eventually, you get to a place where your elbows don't want to go up anymore. Your shoulders tell you that. So please don't go past that spot. We're not forcing... It's not how high can I get my elbows up. 
It's how, how much ease, how far can I go and still have ease? And then coming back down until finally the backs of the hands are touching the knees. And let's roll the shoulders a few times. And oh, well, let's do some leg lifts before we move on. So using the back of the chair for most people, you want to sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to go ahead and lift up and we're going to go down. So notice when we lift up, the toes are pointing straight up and the feet are, uh, they're not turning out or in. They're nice and straight. And then think about extending the heel away, flexing the foot. Actually, let's do that a couple of times. We'll flex and point. So it looks like this from the side, flex and point. And I'm not, this isn't 100%, this is maybe 50%. You can have the, add the hand too if you want. Same kind of idea too. And if you think about the joint, you know, the wrist joint, it has all these little bones in it that, so it can move. It can, so it can, has, has the dexterity that it has. The ankle does as well, or the, the foot does. There's many bones in this area. And so I'm getting a little bit of working together here. And then try the other foot. If you want more of a challenge, you can try it. Uh, not using the back of the chair, or maybe coming a little bit away from the back of the chair so you don't get quite so much support. And you might find one side works with more ease than the other. That's normal. I like this exercise a lot because I find that my ankles um, especially when we sit so much and perhaps don't walk as much as we used to. Hopefully everybody's getting out and walking or getting on something, getting on a treadmill, walking around the house, whatever it is that you, that you can do. We need, to, we need to move all these joints in order for them to work properly. And then come back down. And let's see, so we did, the, uh, we did the toes, the ankles, the knees, the hips, and we did the, uh, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, and the neck. And so let's uh, sit up nice and tall and take a couple of breaths. And exhale, so back and forth like this. And you can adjust how how far up the hands are. So they could be down low or they can be high or in anywhere in between. Elbows no higher than the shoulders though. Now let's sit. So we're gonna do a, I'm gonna do mountain pose. <clears throat> so you can do seated mountain pose or you can stand up and do mountain pose. If you have a wall, if you're standing and you have a wall, you could stand uh, beside the wall or against the wall like this. That's always a handy way to uh, feel what it's like to be vertical. So I'm not, I'm not leaning back against the wall, but I'm just letting the, uh, the buttocks and the shoulder blades and the back of the head touch. But it's a nice little way to gauge the verticality so standing up nice and tall and extending the spine up. So let's start with that a couple of times, bending the knees slightly and then extending the legs. If you're seated, you won't be bending the knees, but you'll be pressing the feet and then extending the spine up. So you'll have an isometric contraction if you're uh, seated. And with this extension, with the straightening, there's a slight contraction in the buttocks. You could even put your hands, take your fingers, put them right on the buttocks. So you can feel, you wanna feel they firm up and they move together a little bit. And maybe about a 20, 30% effort. So we're not trying to, <laughs> we're not trying to like squeeze them together like we're, uh, 
like we're trying to squeeze juice out of an orange. We're, we're just gently firming them up. And the same thing with the belly. We want some firm, so we want firmness in the thighs, firmness in the buttocks, and firmness in the abdomen. And that is going to help stabilize the pelvic, pelvic area and the lower back. So try that a few more times. Straighten. Think about straighten and then extend the spine up. Lift the heart. Move the shoulders back. And let the arms, let the fingers shoot like arrows down towards the floor. Don't let the chin lift up so the face is straight ahead. And the face is relaxed. See if you can smile. So if you have to, uh, if you have to back off a little, it's better to smile and back off than to be like, Err. we don't want to be like that. We might do lion. Well, maybe we'll do lion pose later. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but I actually like that pose. We look kind of silly, but it's a good pose. And standing up nice and tall, and then swinging the arms. Letting the weight move a little bit from side to side. And if you're seated, you could uh, perhaps widen your stance a little bit too. And then leaning from side to side. And you have a little choice here. You could swing the arms a little more like this. Or you could keep them down low like this. They're both okay. It's kind of whatever, what do you feel like today? This is more like a speed skater, right? If you've seen people speed skating, it's like this. And then coming back, I'm going to do triangle pose. So triangle pose, uh, and we'll start it, we'll start it standing. And if you'd like to continue standing, you can. And I'll also, I'll sit down in a moment and show you uh, seated. But if you know it's seated, go ahead and do it. So it's uh, either seated or standing, the feet are apart, and the arms are extended out like this. And then we're going to inhale, extend the spine up, and then lower the hand down on one side and let the hand slide down the legs. Let the other one come up. If you're shoulder sensitive here, I'll bring the hand to the shoulder and just raise the elbow up, see if that helps. So we're working on this elongation of the side of the body and also bending at the hip. We're not really, it's not exactly the hip, it's really up above the hip joint. And if you're seated, you can let the feet turn out slightly and extending the arms and then sliding the hand down. So we're going to go back and forth like that, arms out, and then hand down and sliding down. So arms out, inhale up, and then exhale down, and then come back up. And then lower the arms down, take a breath, pause for a moment, relax, and then inhale, arms out. And then exhale, arm down, and inhale up, and then the other side. Exhale, let, letting the hand slide down the leg, and come up, and then come back down. And then inhale, relax from there, especially the shoulders here. Let the shoulders relax. And we're going to do one more on each side with that one right after the other. So we're relaxing in between. Or you could relax whenever you wanted. So if you need to relax, go ahead and do that. Inhaling. And then exhaling. Hand slides down the leg. And inhaling up. And then exhaling. Hand slides down the other side. And inhale up. And exhale. Arms down. And with any of, the any of these poses that we do, the arms always add a little bit more. Um, they increase the required effort. So if you're feeling a little tired and you don't want to have the arms up, it's okay to just rest the hands. So you could also just do it like this. And that's true with all the poses. Any standing poses that we do, we add the arms, it gets more challenging. 
because not only are we using the lower part of the body, we're using the upper part of the body. So let's do our uh, tree pose. And I'll start it with the seated tree pose. So if you're standing, you'll come into mountain pose with the legs straight. And with uh, seated pose, bring both feet out in front like this. And this is a chance you can actually squeeze the, uh, squeeze the thighs, get a little bit of um, effort going in the adductors here, these muscles in the insides of the legs. And then you're going to step your foot out like this so that there's an opening here in the groin. And the other foot is straight like this. You could even, I haven't really done this before, but you could also try straightening the leg like this and see how that feels. And if that doesn't feel quite right, try moving the foot out a little bit first. And then you can progress to this straight leg. And then seated would be like this. And of course, this looks really similar to the standing one, except we're seated. So if you're standing, you'd be in your mountain pose, and then you would turn your leg out, just like when we were seated, and then you'd find a spot for the inside, the uh, sole of the foot. And then if you want, you can add your arms, if that feels okay. Think about a little contraction in the buttocks here. We were squeezing the buttocks together. So sometimes squeezing the buttocks helps to give a little bit of support, especially to the hip area. And then go ahead and come back down. Ah, so you remember you got your chair too. So, I mean, I have two chairs here, but you could you walk around to the up back of your chair, up back side of your chair, and then do tree pose back there so that you've got something to touch or hold on to, whichever you need. We'll do the other side. So we'll stand. So we're in mountain pose first, whether or not you're seated or standing. And then we're going to turn that leg out, the, op the opposite uh, leg this time. And get your balance here first. Come up on your toes. And we get a nice opening here in the groin. And then find a spot for the sole of the foot. And extend the spine. So we want to be lifting and extending. And if you want, you can add branches for your tree. Branches. So whether your arms are out, some people like this, palms in prayer position in front of the heart, and some people even like the, uh, the, <laughs> the palms touching so that the arms are straight or overhead. Your choice, making sure that you can keep the spine straight. Now let's come back down. Let's do that one more time. Do tree pose one more time. It's one of my favorite poses, tree pose. Remembering that if we focus on something, we focus on a drishti point, a point of concentration, we, our mind focuses, doesn't wander, we have better balance. So mountain pose, standing up nice and tall, or seated, standing, uh, sitting up nice and tall, and then shift the weight into one foot and turn the opposite one out, find a spot for the sole of the foot, either on the, the uh, outside chair, chair leg or the inside of the calf if you're standing and then go ahead and add your arms buttocks are firmed up navel is firmed up extending the spine up raise your eyes raise your thoughts see if you can add a little smile and remember you can come down whenever you want and then come on down if you haven't already. And do the other side, standing up nice and tall. We firm up the buttocks, we firm up the belly, shift the weight, turning that thigh out, finding a spot for the sole of the foot. And then adding the arms if you want. You can also add one arm if you want to keep one on the chair. And then remember to breathe. And then Raise your eyes, raise your thoughts. And then come back down <clears throat> and swing. Let's work on opening that front hip <clears throat> to counteract sitting. 
So if you stand behind your chair or you have any kind of counter or a desk, it doesn't really matter, just something to rest your hands on, you can step back like this. We'll do that a few times, stepping back. And as you step back, think about lifting up like you're going to take off. So notice that my chest is, is, uh, is bending slightly back. I wouldn't call it a back bend, but it's an, it's a, an extension. It's a spinal extension. And we're going to go back and forth. You could also, if you have room under your chair, you could also do it so that you step forward under the chair and then step back like this. You could make the movement a little smaller. And what that's going to do is um, this is a nice extension here, and this is going to rele really release that extension. Notice everything becomes very straight. And then actually the buttocks go the, the opposite direction. So I extend, and there's a little contraction in the buttocks, and then the opposite way, then there's a uh, stretching of the buttocks in the opposite direction. And if you're seated, so if you're standing, please keep going. And if you want, whenever you get tired on that side, switch to the other side. Switch to the other side. So if you're seated, you can do the same, something similar like this. Let me actually turn sideways so you can see. I slide to the edge of the chair. So I'm not falling off the chair, but I'm sitting right on the edge. My sitting bones are still on the chair, but my buttock is sticking out. And then I'm going to step back like this. And I, I prefer to do it like this. I wouldn't step back and forth each time if I'm seated. I would use my arm to get that feeling of that, that uh, movement. So instead of this leg stepping back, the arm is swinging forward and back. And then I can switch sides and do the other side. And if you haven't switched sides on the, uh, when you're standing, please go ahead and switch. So my foot comes back, then notice that the heel is pointing straight back. So in the beginning, it might only go back a little bit. So there's an opening here. So I'm looking for that opening in the front, right where the uh, right below the ribs, coming down to the top of the thigh. And then with time, you might find that you get more opening here. And that's the opposite of when we sit. So when I sit, there's no opening here, or I should say there's the angle here is very, is 90 degrees. When I do this, it's almost 180 degrees. It's opening, and that's a good thing. As long as there's no pain or discomfort. So I'm stepping back and forward and lifting up. So we use the extension of the spine to help facilitate the opening. Actually, whenever we extend the spine, uh, really any, any of the muscles that are connected, and they're all connected with the spine or with the, uh, everything's interconnected. So when we extend the spine, we get a better stretch in all the muscles around different parts of the body. And then let's uh, go ahead and sit down. Actually, do we have anything? Yeah, let's go ahead and sit. Let's sit down. And sitting up nice and tall and take a couple of breaths. And exhaling. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to do some, um, we're going to do some leg lifting. I want to focus a little bit on the quadriceps and also the uh, the abdomen. So you may want to use the back of the chair here. Makes it a little bit easier with some support. Go ahead and lift the foot up and then slowly bring it back down. So we did an extension before, but we didn't really we didn't work uh, on the quadriceps and the belly per se. We're doing a little bit of a lengthening and extension of the leg before. So now we're going to, and let's just try it like this. I'm just going to slide forward. 
As you lift the leg up, think about pressing the opposite foot into the floor. And then coming back down, feel the weight become even between the feet. So lifting the foot up, pressing the opposite foot into the floor. It helps to give us a little bit extra lift. So it's that pressing of the foot, that support that helps to give us lift to the spine. So as you press the foot down, think about the buttocks pressing down and the spine lifting. And you'll notice this is a harder, it's harder to get lift in the spine with only one leg. Definitely easier with both legs. I'm going to go back and forth like this. and I'm gonna flex my foot. If you rest your hands on the thighs, it can be nice because you can really feel the thigh tighten underneath. That's what we want. And we lift up, thigh tightens. Actually, you know, when we press the foot and extend the opposite leg, both thighs, this is an isometric contraction on the bent leg and a um, uh, not an isometric contraction on the opposite leg. I'm gonna do the other side now. And see if you can get a little bit more lifting when you press the foot and feel the sitting bones pressing. And if you want, you can actually add the opposite hand here. We're lifting the arm up, feel a connection between the hand, between the fingers and the toes, maybe like a little string or a wire, or even just something so that as one comes up, the other lifts up. So they work in unison. They're working in unison. And we want to keep the belly engaged so that the back's not sagging. If the back's rounding, you need support for the back so it does not round. We don't want the lumbar spine moving backwards towards the back of the chair. So if you need to, you could always take a pillow or a blanket and put it back there for support. And then come back down and let's uh, reach up. I'm gonna go from side to side. Your little lateral extension here. And then try adding, raising the foot up if you want. So this is sort of the next step. Reaching up and beginning to go over and then lifting and extending the leg. Perhaps the leg doesn't extend quite so much as when we were focused, sitting up nice and straight, but that's okay. We never want to force the legs straight. We're using the uh, <clears throat> quadriceps to straighten the leg, but for many of us, our leg won't straighten all the way. I know that my hamstrings are pretty tight, and my legs do not easily straighten so that, that, so that my leg is totally straight sticking out. Some people do, but not me. And sitting up nice and tall. Let's take a few breaths. We'll inhale and exhale. Let's give ourselves a little hug. We deserve a hug. And then the opposite side. Mm. This should feel nice. Nice. And so let's do, uh, we won't do all of lion pose today. Let's we're gonna do one part of lion pose. So one part of lion pose is actually sticking the tongue out and making a roaring sound. So it's like this, it's like a, almost like a growling. So try that with me. <clears throat> Thinking about um, maybe 50% effort on sticking the tongue out. So we're not straining. Please don't strain your face when you do this. Don't strain your tongue. I mean, the tongue is a muscle. Don't strain everything around here to stick your tongue out. Start small. So even if it's, eh. And with practice, you'll find your tongue sticks out better. And there's nobody, well, I, you may have a partner with you or a spouse with you who will see your tongue sticking out, but Maybe that's okay. 
just don't stick it out at them. And you'll find it really works on the cheeks and firms up the jaw. And a couple more times. Remember, start small. And one more. And maybe it even makes you smile. And sit up nice and tall. And we're going to find our, our relaxation pose. So we're going to soften and, and sit back in the chair. So whether or not you have a little support behind you, that's okay. It's good. Support is good. Anything that you can do to make yourself more comfortable here. If you're feeling a little, a little cool, or if you know that you get cool as you cool down. Actually, let's cool, let's do a couple of these. A couple inhale and arms around, just to cool down a little. Inhale and arms around. If you want, if you're already in uh, in your shavasana and you want to just rest, you can. And one more like this, nice, really easy, nice and easy. And you can roll a shoulder if you want. <clears throat> so anything that you do, anything that you like to do, so that you can become more comfortable and sit up with some ease. Sit up with some ease. Just feeling the breath going in and out, feeling the belly filling, perhaps feeling a little bit in the ribs. Not too much effort here. We want to be feeling things moving, but without a lot of effort. Relaxing the face and the eyes softening the jaw, the tongue, and the throat. <coughs> Excuse me. Relaxing the shoulders. As we inhale, we want to have good posture, but we want to be relaxed. So think about sitting up a little bit. Very gentle. And then as we exhale, we want to soften. We release, we relax. So if you'd like, I know that the... Uh, I think our broadcast is going to end, but you can continue in our Shavasana. We'll stay with this for just a little bit longer if you're on Zoom. But either way, you're always welcome to turn off your electronic device and just practice Shavasana for maybe another five minutes, even 10 minutes, as long as you want. You could also lay down to practice. And if you fall asleep, it's okay laying down. Don't fall asleep seated. I'll see everybody again on a Tuesday or Friday, depending on when you come. You can always come to both classes. <coughs> Excuse me. Namaste. Thank you.